<laughs> Hi guys, I don't know what this angle is. I think I was trying to show this, this, um, I don't think it's really giving what I wanted it to give, but um, I'm in all black today because I am um, mourning the loss of an object, first of all. Um, so yeah, let's talk about it. I don't know. This is such a weird video for me to make because like one part of me feels like sad that like it's gone. It feels like a representation of my old life. However, I welcome that part gone because of the new part coming in, which is family life and the reason it's gone to begin with. So let me show a different angle. It might make more sense. So you might recognize the driveway. You might recognize these two cars, but you may be asking, wait, Trish, I thought you had three cars. And the answer to that is no more, no more pink Rolls Royce. Um, so our pink Rolls Royce was actually, it was actually picked up. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this feels so real. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, these are our cars, which I'm super thankful and blessed, but we're giving away these cars too. We're turning these cars in. Um, <laughs> But, oh my God, this is so weird. Like, we always parked our cars outside because our garage is like, we have a golf cart in one, we have a gym in the other, we have storage in the other. It was, we just always parked our cars outside. So it's like weird for me to see this. And now pink car. <laughs> okay, get it together. Okay, first and foremost, this video is not a complaining video. It's not even a sad video. It's not even a feel sorry for me video. None of that. Like, it's actually a video full of like gratitude. And I really, really mean that. And the reason I'm even making this video, and it seems so dramatic, but I feel like my purpose online, like I really feel like well, I know what my purpose online has been. I have been such a mess online to the point of like, it's embarrassing. Um, it's embarrassing. <laughs> my past is embarrassing point blank period. And I always thought, oh, I really not only mess up my life, you know, my husband has to deal with the repercussions of things, of the actions I've had on the internet the past 16 years and then I was like oh my gosh now my daughter has to see what like, her mom was such a mess like all this stuff. and it's it like kind of got to me for a minute and I was like wow nothing I can do can erase the past and show all the messy all the problematic all the just unwellness I was and yes part of it is like I didn't know I had a mental illness and I wasn't getting treatment but a lot of part of it was just messy and embarrassing and that's the best way I can keep describing it and um and like, I, I do regret it. I regret, I, I regret so much of it, you know? And it's just, God, just like go back and tell 18 year old self, don't put so much out there. Like I do tell people like influencers or just a general message, like what you put out there is out there forever. And sometimes it's better to reel it back in. Even now when I have breakdowns, issues with my mental health, bad mental health days, I don't, my first instinct isn't to record it. My first instinct isn't even to tell you guys about it because it's just, it's something that I'm dealing with and I don't want to necessarily put out to the world. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I do have bad mental health days. I do have days where, uh, I get frustrated and I just want to like vent, but, um, I do have a therapist and I do have a husband. So I'm, I'm already ahead of Trish in 2018. So, uh, but I understand why young people do it, where they put all their information on the internet. I just always give my unfortunate expertise on the situation to like, not put it all out there to not show every single thing not only does it like open you up to make you vulnerable but like it can be used against you later on I applaud people who are open about their mental health I continue to be because I do think that's my purpose and my reason that I'm here so when I do have some bad mental health days maybe I don't my first instinct isn't to film it maybe my first instinct doesn't tell you about it right away but over time I share the details that while I feel like I have grown so much and I've healed so much of my brain of my chemical imbalance, of all of that through therapy, through DBT, through love, through church. I go to church, you know, all of that can be very, take it for what you will, but just through so much work, I've really healed so much of myself and I really do feel I'm the happiest version of myself now. And I wish I wasn't 30, almost 36 years old figuring this out. Okay, I'm 35 figuring this out, but hey, better late than never. But like I said, I always applaud young people when they talk about their mental health issues. I love when people are open about it. Um, so share what you want online. Just know it's forever. Just know people will use it against you. And for me, it's 
so much has been out there. It doesn't matter what I share now because of all the crazy stuff that I put out there and I use that word literally, even though it's maybe not the nicest word to describe myself and my mental health condition, but of all the stuff I put out there in the past, like it's really like anything I put up there now is tame, you know, because I'm like doing the work and I'm progressing and stuff like that as opposed to the past where it's just wild and unhinged. Um, all that to say, <laughs> my pink girl's race is gone and I, yeah, we ended up turning it in. Um, I leased the cars because for so long I was like buying out my cars this is another really big mistake. I think in my personal opinion, buying out cars because I would always buy out my cars right away. I had a red Mercedes convertible, a white Mercedes convertible, but a Mercedes G-Wagon that I customized pink. But I lost so much money on each of those because I was like, well, every time I'd get a new car, I would lose a hundred K doing custom paint jobs. Again, beautiful, cute, everything. Like if you want to do it, do it but lost so much money when I turned it in. Lamborghinis I bought outright, lost so much money. So I just decided I'm gonna lease cars. I started with my Mercedes AMG and it was great, it's great. Like it is throwing away money for sure. It's like renting or whatever, but like cars lose their values. Houses don't, so invest in a house, you know, it's better than renting, I guess in the long run. Again, I'm not against renting, I did it for so long. Plus there's a lot of upkeep with houses, but that's a whole other thing. Um, but leases, it's like every, every, two years you could get a new car and in theory I had my car for two years my pink girls race and in theory I could have switched it in for a new one um I just I just loved the pink car I just loved it um part of me is sad that it's gone because it was like one of a kind I got so many compliments on it and it was just such a part of who I was prior to everything like meeting Moses and stuff like that but then I was like do I miss that life I was so lonely I was so sad I was doing a job I didn't love like do you know what I mean like so I was like, I don't know. It's almost like when you, when you give birth, you know, I went to some therapy, uh, specializing in postpartum depression. I don't think I suffered that much in comparison. Not that it's a competition. I think I did have a little bit of it. Um, but I did see a therapist right away before I started seeing any signs of it also mixed with my borderline. I was like, let me just make sure I got this under control. And one of the things that I say is like, you kind of mourn your past life, which I thought was kind of weird because I was like, well, I was miserable. All I have ever wanted to be was a mom. All I ever wanted was to give my love to a baby. Like, this is it. This is all I've ever wanted. That makes no sense why I would mourn my past life. Like, I, I definitely didn't, I wasn't happy. Like, look at the videos, rewind the tape. Like, literally look at the videos. I wasn't happy. I was so lonely. I was so depressed. I really thought I was gonna be able to get pregnant. I never thought I'd find a guy that was going to like love me. Like, it was, and so I was like, that's odd to mourn my past life. But it kind of just meant like, almost like, life before because here's the thing once you have a baby your life completely changes and like everyone understands that to some degree until the baby's here you're just like oh that is now your entire life like the rest of my life is all about my daughter and it's the most beautiful thing to me it's so beautiful because now my life has so much more purpose again speaking for me personally than I could have ever imagined right I'm like this is why I'm still here this is why I struggled this is why I survived everything because this is my my purpose to raise this daughter and guide her and make our next generation better like I truly believe that but that means no more just me and Moses that means no more just going out whenever and not to say like I go out in clubs like I definitely was never that person um, but just in general not buying a designer purse because hey we need to do family vacations we need to do photo shoots she has to go to the dentist. We have a doctor's appointment. Got to get the vaccines. Like not having a pink Rolls Royce, that's $5,000 a month because $5,000 a month is $60,000 a year. And we could go on family trips with that. Uh, college, um, schooling, extracurricular activities, dance classes. When I was young, we always had to drop out of dance about nine months into, like about eight months into the year because we couldn't afford recital costumes. And I am not going to be that mom who just spends everything on myself and nothing on the baby because she she deserves the pink Rolls Royce to you know like her little to drive around in and stuff like that she doesn't care about a big pink Rolls Royce she doesn't care about a Range Rover she doesn't care what car we're driving right now you know maybe when they're 16 they do but she doesn't care about that you know what I mean and it was it distracted it, it always brought attention people always waited by the car people would follow even if it wasn't fans like just random people would follow know where we live all this stuff like that so it was like really actually scary you guys know if I mukbanged in that car while well, I loved it and I felt like it was such a boat and bougie I was always scared because <laughs> you would see the car rightfully so it's a pink Rolls Royce and I'd be scared and I like it's just not doesn't make sense for me and where I'm at in life right now so you know they came to take the car and it's kind of like 
because it was like basically they couldn't renew my lease because it was a company it was like a weird company um I won't say weird in a bad way but kind of weird because like I just didn't have great credit and to get a lease on a five hundred thousand dollar car with bad credit like you have to put a lot down you have to go to a little bit of a shady company and not shady just like they're not a big bank you know so they were kind of like closing up their operation and they just basically weren't doing leases anymore so like you need to buy the car for like two hundred fifty thousand dollars was like what I owed on it still um or I take it back and I was like <sighs> I'm like, do we get our whole savings and put it in the car? I was like, no, it wasn't even a question. It wasn't even a question. Also with the baby being on the way, baby number two, I just was like, there's, you know, one, we need, we need the, you know, we need more seats. We need like the whole seven people, uh, because you know, when my parents come into town or, you know, whatever, we just need more people, the two car seats we need in bucket seats. I need to be able to be back there, get in and out. Um, and it just, it just didn't make sense. You know, the rules were going to make sense. I couldn't fit in between them. Um, and it was just too expensive at the end of the day. So I did watch it walk away. I did watch literally someone come and drive it off. And I was just like, <gasps> I was like, oh man, that was like my baby. Like I worked so hard for it. You know what I mean? But you know what I worked even harder for? The life I have now. <laughs> Owning a home, married this amazing guy who's literally my dream man who every day is just I fall more and more in love with I'm just like how are you literally so perfect every day keeps me calm keeps me sane and then we have a beautiful daughter and another beautiful baby on the way this is the life that I've always wanted that I said I would I look back at this old YouTube clip that was on TikTok of me being like I would trade everything I have my career every dollar in my bank account to have like a family and a husband that loves me and guess what I have right now that and I didn't even have to trade every dollar in my bank account all I had to trade was my Rolls Royce and I feel so free I thought oh my god losing my car like this is this will be the saddest this will be the hardest goodbye I've ever had to a car I'm gonna be I just this I love this car everyone loved this car this was like my my this was my status that I made it not even thinking like this is the status that I made it this is the status that I made it that I have this this house full of love truly you know what I mean and it is great it's great to own a house and it's great to be able to have two more cars but like family is everything and I know I know for a fact I would be happy in any setting in any situation as long as I have my daughter my husband and my my second baby that's that's it. This is the dream. And once we got pregnant with the same baby, I was like, I was like, this feels just complete. We just feel so happy. I think we're going to be good at two kids. Um, you know, unless something happens, you know, if there's another plan, but you know, for us, we're just so content with our family that we were so blessed to get, you know, to have two kids, to have trading in the Rolls Royce means getting a bigger seat for our growing family. Like, you know, like, the choice is simple. <laughs> the choice is simple. One of my moderators on my ASMR channel and on my podcast channel, her name is Jane Doe, um, she sent me an email and she's like, oh, you know, a lot of people wanted to have a final goodbye of the Rolls Royce and if you're going to, you know, and a lot of people were sad. So I was like, because it is such a part of me and like my online persona. And I was just like, you know what? That's a sad video. You know what's not a sad video? Is standing here and just saying how wonderful and how happy I am. How much happier I am now that the car is gone. Not only are we gonna save money, $60,000 a year, right? What can we put that towards? Anything. Trips to Disney World, trips to Tokyo Disney. Like, you know what I mean? And how lucky am I to even be saying that? To even be like, wow, we could have saved that money to go on family vacations. I know I didn't go on family vacations as a kid, um, ever. We never went anywhere as a family. So, and to me, that was normal. Like, I didn't even think people go on family vacations and stuff like that. So I'm so lucky to even be saying that. Um, so the pink Rolls race is gone. <laughs> it is gone. And uh, good riddance. And you know what? I honestly think, like, truly, right? If I won a million dollars in the lottery tomorrow, I don't even think I'd get another Cullen in. I really don't. You know what would be fun to do? Like, I don't know, get a lake house where we can go make memories, get a boat. Like, I don't know, not a yacht, but like, you know, like a little like lake boat or something like that. Um, we are going to be turning in these two cars as well. So again, gratitude. I'm so thankful that we have two cars right now. This is Moses's Jeep. Um, he used to do a lot more work where he would go back and forth and have to like bring furniture back and forth. And uh, we pretty much work together full time now. So he doesn't really use the truck as much. And then we have the Range Rover, which is actually pretty small. And um, I'm not gonna say I hated the Range Rover, but it was always my dream car. And it's actually been my least favorite of all the cars that I've owned. So let us know if you are a family 
that has like one of those, I definitely need like bucket seats, like captain seats or something, or like vans where you can like go to the back where you can like walk through the aisle. Um, we've been looking at a, a couple different ones. I think they have like GMC. Uh, we want affordable. Okay. Luxury cars don't really make minivans. Luxury car brands don't make minivans. So I guess it's not family. <laughs> like there's no Lamborghini minivan. There was a Lexus one that Moses found, but it's only in Europe. And I was like, oh man, that Lexus van would have been so cool. Um, we don't need a fancy Mercedes one, but yeah, we're going to definitely trade in two because there's two of us and sometimes we are gone at the same time. So it just makes sense. I never drive the truck. This is not going to work for the two car seats. Like it just won't fit in the back with them. So let us know your options and you guys, you know, it is really, I've been so superficial, you know, I, and I am, I, I, I love things, but I'll tell you what, like. And it's hard. It's hard the first couple of years when you like stop buying things for yourself, right? But it's really like when we think about long-term goals, which I never thought about solo. I never thought about for myself. And I have my husband to thank for that, right? When we think about long-term goals, stuff that I didn't, you know, wouldn't think is possible. It's like, oh, how do we achieve that? Oh, stop spending a thousand dollars here. Stop spending a thousand dollars there. You know, enjoy life. We always enjoy life. We're always gonna, you know, because we are, we're very fortunate and we're very blessed, but not just buying every little thing, not spending every dollar in the bank account. And I'm like, it really does start adding up. I know this sounds so dumb and I'm like 35 years old and figuring this out, but my best advice, and I know so many young people are so smart with their money. I know, I know, I see it on TikTok. People are so smart, they save, like they're, you guys are smart. <laughs> but as someone who's not smart, just know like the little things do add up. I know in a year we were able to save a lot. <laughs> I don't even wanna say, like there's, there's been times I made $500,000 in a month and I've spent it all and I've gone to zero and then taxes come around and you owe 250,000 of that 500,000 and you're like, oh my gosh, like what am I doing? And you're no longer making 500,000 a month. So just know <laughs> with taxes always put half away, but really just cutting out little things like nails, my hair, I get my hair done now twice, um, my hair color done like twice a year. I used to go literally every two weeks, like just cutting all that like little stuff out literally adds up. I mean, <laughs> this might sound crazy because it probably sounds like I spent a lot, but we were, I was saving $10,000 a month cutting out little things, tiny things, not going to target every week and just spending $500 here. I thought, oh, it's $500 here, $500 there. And again, I'm fortunate that I'm able to say that, but that adds up. That's like $20,000 a year. I'm spending at target just frivolously. And so <laughs> we spend money on food. We spend money on, I guess, entertainment, but not really. I've been pregnant the past two years. So we haven't been traveling or anything, but now this might apply more if you like have a family. And I think if you have children, you already kind of know this. Um, but if you don't have children and you're sad for me that I don't have my pink rolls rice, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm really, really, really not sad. Um, and I don't know. I think in the past I was always embarrassed. Like you guys know, I always said I was embarrassed to like return stuff or embarrassed to not have something anymore. Um, and I, I don't know. It's just always like embarrassed, but it's like not embarrassing. If anything, it's like such a flex. Like I'm saving all this money now. I don't know. And that's truly in my head and in my heart because I wouldn't be making this video if I was just trying to be like hush hush about it or something like that. But I feel like I've talked about it a lot and I feel like, I don't know, there's just so much else to put money towards. And I think again, that's life experience and getting older. And I actually have people to share memories and experiences with. So I'm super, I'm super lucky. That's what I'd rather do with my money and um, all of that. But all of that to say, the pink rolls rice is gone, 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 gone. And uh, I couldn't be happier, but I wanted to share the news with all of you guys because this is kind of my farewell to the pink car. I didn't do one last goodbye because um, I was sad. I was sad in the moment. It was a little sad. I was like, oh no. But now I'm happy that that's, that's the decision. This is a skim set. I'm also wearing black hats because Brooke and Tana wear hats all the time. So I'm wearing baseball caps. And yeah, I was supposed to do a podcast today and my guest couldn't make it. Um, totally fine. She was feeling a little under the weather. So I had full glam and I had nothing to do with it on because we filmed, we actually filmed Hot Topics on Sunday because today was the guest was supposed to be on Monday. Um, and so we kind of moved everything around, but I could have just been like, oh, last minute, let's film Hot Topics, but we filmed all the topics yesterday and there's no new Hot Topics within the, the past 24 hours. So I just decided to film <laughs> this video for you guys. And I also filmed an ASMR one. So if you guys wanna check that out, um, I have an ASMR unboxing of the iPhone 15 plus. I got a pink one. <laughs> After all that saying, like, don't spend your money. But they did have a new pink iPhone and I was like, okay, I need that. 
and it's the holidays. So, um, I love you guys. Seriously. Thank you so much. All the love. I'm just, I can't even believe that I'm pregnant with baby number two. I can't even believe that I have like this amazing loving family. Like when I go up there and it's bath time, I'm like, oh my gosh, Moses gets the bath ready. I give her a little bath, wrap her up in her towel, wash her hair. Like it's just, this is my life. Like I just, it's so, they're just smiling, waving at the door. Like it's, it's every, it's like more than I could ever dream of. Okay. When I was a little girl, I didn't dream of a pink Rolls Royce. I dreamt of having a happy family that celebrates the holidays together, that eats dinner together, that just is like smiling and laughing all the time. And that's what I have. And we are smiling and laughing all the time. And to me, <sighs> that's the greatest gift. Happy children, happy husband, happy wife, and like truly, truly happy because I don't know if I grew up in a household that was always laughing and giggling. It wasn't awful or anything like that, but there was sadness to it, you know, divorce and all this. Oh God, I think oh, there's been so many divorces this year. And I think about that. And I'm just like, I'm a child of divorce too. And you know, at the time when you're a child of divorce, you don't think about it. You don't know any different, but I couldn't imagine. I, oh, oh, it makes me so sad. And I know there's so many circumstances that people get divorce and uh, I obviously would never judge, you know, uh, but I just, it makes me, it like breaks my heart to think Moses couldn't see Malibu every day or I couldn't even see Malibu every day. Like that breaks my heart so much. Um, so if you're someone who's gone through divorce or a child of divorce, like it's, it's, we have, a, we have trauma. Like there is some trauma. There is some sadness there where you don't think it affects you because that's all you know. But, oh, anyways, I get, sometimes I get really sad. We were watching the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. First time watching it. And it just like, it literally broke my heart because like Charlie didn't want to be with him at the beginning. He just wanted to be with the mom and his stepdad. And then he only wanted to be with his dad. And then his dad was getting his parental rights taken away. And it's just like those movies, that and Liar Liar, he watched as a kid with my dad. And it just like breaks my heart so much where they're moving across country without his dad. Like, uh, I think because my dad lived in California. This is getting into trauma, but my dad lived in California and my mom lived in Illinois when I was growing up. So it was just like, I, I didn't get to see my dad even every other weekend. Like I saw him on like summers. and I don't know. We could say whose fault. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But <laughs> It really makes such a difference. And I love that this generation is like healing that. I know so many dads that are in their kids' lives that are like actively in their kids' life that takes them to dance, that participates. And it makes me happy and it gives me hope for the next generation. And this is a whole lot of rambling. But um, not only is being a mom been the best thing ever, but it's like <sighs> never in a million years, I think turning my pink Rolls Royce in would mean my family expanding having two children like to put in the cars like that's never been in my wildest dream never I even I didn't I never had that vision of that and now it's happening and I'm just like wow it happened all at the right time right the lease is up new baby's coming and it's just ah uh, it just feels right everything feels great so <sighs> there's that I love you guys family is the most important thing whether it's the family that was bestowed upon us or family we chose, it's so important and it really is all that matters in life. So I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.